Well, for 44 years now, the rustic and charming Olney Theater has been the place for summer theater. There's nothing better than journeying out here to the quiet fields and trees of Olney, Maryland for a little live stage drama. There may be no Broadway flash and glitter here, but there are acres of fireflies and no lack of quality professional theater. In the past two years, though, something has been added to the typical summer fair here, spring and fall. Well, the Olney is rapidly turning into a year-round playhouse. And here to tell us a little bit about those exciting changes is the managing director of the Olney Theater, Mr. Bill Graham. Bill, thank you for joining me. Sure. Yeah, now, I said 44 years, that's when the Olney Theater opened in 1942. But... There were a few years during the war where gas rationing prohibited um, production. And during that time, the theater was used as a training ground for Joe Lewis. He came out and boxed in the theater. Is that right? Yeah. Inside the theater he boxed? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, well, you're ending up this season now with a, a musical, Stephen Sondheim's Little Night Music. Can you tell us a little about that production? I'm trying to do something different with the Little Night Music. Little Night Music is one of Sondheim's best works, and it was done superbly in the early 70s when it was first produced on Broadway. And then the touring company came around, and if you didn't see that, then you haven't seen a little night music. We've gone over the script and over the script, and we hope that we've found a new way of presenting it that will make it uh, something special for the people who have seen it and equally as special for the people who haven't. Well, first of all, we have the theater here, and then we have the only house itself. And uh, people who come down here to be in the shows actually stay in the only house? Is that sure. Right? Uh, yeah. Milo O'Shea is in one of the rooms upstairs right now. And that was an old farmhouse. The center of it was built in 1885. And then it was an Italian restaurant in the 20s, and a, the porch and the kitchen was added on. I see. And it's a nice, spacious room now. Oh, yeah, it's great space. The actors come in, and at first, um, when you talk to the agents in New York, they say, now, they're going to have their own apartment, right? And they'll have their own kitchen and their own living space. And I say, no, they get a room. And the rooms are a nice size, but they have to share the kitchen, and all the living space is the same. Instead of going away to a city and having your own private little apartment and being away from everyone, you're lonely here, everyone's together, and it's um, a fun time. Yeah, this is your first time with uh, out here at the Only Theater. Is that true? Yes, it is, yes. We've heard a lot about it, and a lot of our friends, especially the Irish Connection, are, have been here a number of times. Pauline Flanagan, Hugh Leonard's play, Da, originated here. And uh, so through that, as I say, the Irish, especially the Irish Connection, we, we, we've known about Only for some time and have been wanting to work here. So this presented itself, and here we are. Well, it's quite unique. I, I've never really... Uh, I've, I've, I've done regional theatre over here in America, but I've never... Uh, been so much at home, as it were, because it's like one big family. And uh, the, the way the uh, stage is designed to take uh, both sets at the same time, it's like on a, on a almost like on a little uh, railway track. You don't have that terrible wrench of going from a, a rehearsal hall into a theater. Yes, you get to work on your set, which is amazing. And now the la night music crowd are doing the same thing. They move our set off to the side at night. They move their set on. So you really have that luxury of being on your set for three weeks, which is, especially if you're doing a hard show, like Reet is a very tough show to do. And so is night music a tough show. So when you have a especially difficult show, that luxury is, so it's almost a necessity, not a luxury. Of course, we were here on our own for a, a period. It was... It was uh, um, it, it was like living in a big castle with two little people running around because there was nobody else here. So we were on our own and was rather lonely. Uh, so now that the night, uh, little night music people are in, it's it's, uh, and we have some friends that we know in the company. So of course, uh, yes, it's like, almost like a party every night. We uh, get together and tell stories and. <laughs> all that sort of thing and it is fun but everybody sort of cooks everyone has their own little place you know your own little refrigerator place your own little shelf place it's a little like camp that's true it works out you know it works out very well especially when you have uh, groups that are so compatible and the night music crowd are a lovely cast as the man for all seasons crowd were lovely before so we i mean you're fortunate when you've got a, a group of very nice people i mean i shudder to think what it would be like you know if if you didn't. <laughs> Maybe there's a play in that, a group of <laughs> there is, uh, yes, incompatible right. actors yes, getting together. Yes, and then you're forced in. <laughs> well, here I am now inside the wonderful Olney House, and uh, I'm really having a great time talking with the veteran stage actress Anne Francine. Anne, thank you for joining me. I'm delighted. Now, we talked with Bill a little earlier, and he was giving us a little bit about the history of the Olney, but I understand yeah. that you have a personal connection maybe you could share with us. When was the first time you were in the Olney? Yes, well, I feel as if 
Well, maybe I am a little bit a part of the history of Olney because I was here many years ago. Shall I sell the date, actually? I, I'd be pleased. You'd be pleased, 1948. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a marvelous time. It, of course, that was during uh, Dickie Skinner's tenure here, Richard Skinner. And that uh, summer, he had um, Mary Hay Helen Hayes' daughter uh -huh. was here, and Jamie MacArthur. They were both here, and Helen came down to visit. She was doing Alice Sit by the Fire, the daughter, and uh, I, with her mother. They did it together. It was a great coup for this theater to get Helen Hayes here. I think it was the first play that Mary had ever done, really, of importance, with her mother, of course. So uh, they did that, and then Mary had to, uh, Helen had to go someplace to do another show, and she left the children here, and she left me in charge of them. We had met, we met here, and she said, Anne, you seem responsible. Uh, would you just keep an eye out for Mary and, and uh, Jamie? And I said, of course, I'd be delighted. And uh, we were outside playing. Now, there wasn't, uh, all these trees were not cut down at that time. This, this parking lot here mm -hmm. was trees, lovely forest. Mm -hmm. And there was a little sort of a, of a green sward in the middle. And we were out there playing, and somebody had a, uh, a golf club and a ball. And they were swinging the golf club, and they hit the ball, and it hit Jamie MacArthur in the side of the head, and he plummeted to the ground. And I thought, oh, my. <gasps> Helen's left me in charge, and her son's dead. <laughs> what am I going to do? And I was absolutely terrified. You can imagine how I felt. Thank goodness he was only stunned, but for one minute I was the one who was stunned anyway, and then, bless her heart, Mary died shortly after that, which was such a tragedy. Anyway, I came here with Diana Barrymore and her husband, Bob Wilcox. Now, Diana Barrymore is one of the Barrymore? Uh, Di Diana Barrymore. Barrymore was John Barrymore's daughter, uh -huh. John Barrymore, who, had, who married uh, then Dolores Costello and had an, a son, John. Junior, I don't know what's ever happened to John. I don't what do you so. know? I mean, anyway, I've seen him in a couple of movies years ago. I don't know where he's now. And Diana and her husband and I traveled around uh, all over the summer stock circuit and did uh, light up the sky. Mm. And I don't know. I think we started it here. I'm not sure. And so that's how I knew it. And you know, it hasn't changed. Just those trees are gone, which I miss terribly, of course, me being a tree lover. But I imagine it's a, it's a symbol of uh, success. A success, because uh, somebody was telling me, I don't know if it wasn't even you, that, uh, you know, that's absolutely full, that uh, parking lot. And where would they park if it wasn't there? So, but it's a great thrill for me to come back. And the other day, Bill uh, Graham showed me uh, one of the, uh, some of the books. And there they were, and there was my name in it and all that. Oh, I was... I'm very pleased. Yeah, that very, was the, the very early days of the only theater. I mean, absolutely. It was built in Tallulah had been here and, of course, raised Kane as Tallulah <laughs> only could. She was a great friend of Dickie Skinner's, and so she came down here. And he had a, a, a really star studded thing going. 20th Century played that summer with, uh, I think, it's Leontovich. I'm not sure if it was that or the other Russian. I get them mixed up, sort of. And Jose Ferrer. And, oh, dear. Well, those days of summer theater are really kind of changed. Fabulous. You don't, uh, don't really find that kind of power-packed Not really. No, here. not really. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. But if you do, they're usually in, in, a, in a theater someplace, not in a mm -hmm. summer theater. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I remember playing in a barn, literally, with the cows. Cows. I happen to be very fond of cows. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> with the cows mooing next door uh, through the scene. Not out here at the only thing. Not here at all. Uh -huh, they didn't let cows in, I don't believe. <laughs> no, they didn't let cows in. <laughs> well, yeah. what the, now, I understand at one point you, uh, you, you took over for B. Arthur in MAME on Broadway? Oh, uh, I, I, I replaced B. Uh -huh. in MAME, yeah. She did it for a year, and then they uh, asked me to take over, and I said to B, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving this incredible hit show that everybody loves that you must love? She said, I wanted to play Mame. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you with that show then? Did I was there with it until it ended. Angela left and I stayed on and did it with, oh dear, Janice Page, I um, uh, can't remember who all, ending up with Ann Miller. At one point, Judy Garland was supposed to come in. Is that right? I never heard that. And uh, Judy, who happened to have been a friend of mine, and I, she was a marvelous 
creature, Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. She was just wonderful, as everybody knows. Even those who didn't know her know how wonderful she must have been, and indeed was. But then Ann Miller came, uh, he said, Ann Miller's coming. I said, that's it. That's the end. Mm -hmm. I am not going to play uh, Vera to Ann Miller's Mame. That's uh, outrageous after having done it with Angela Lansbury. I mean, come on. Ann Miller was wonderful. She was absolutely wonderful. She wasn't Mame the way you and I think of Mame or the way Angela created her. But Ann Miller comes out onto a stage and the audience just goes, ah, and they love her. And she loves the audience. Mm -hmm. And they put in a tap number for her. Is that right? And then she'd come <laughs> off under the wings and she'd have her oxygen tent. <laughs> oh, it was fascinating. Oh, no. Now you're back in a musical out here at Olney. It's uh, Little Night Music with Stephen, Sa Stephen Sondheim's Little Night Music. Steve, Steve. Have you ever met Stephen Sondheim? No. no. I wish I had. I played uh, his, some of his other shows, Company. One of his other shows, Company. Oh, wonderful. Oh. Now, that, it's a real challenge to put on a Stephen Sondheim show, isn't it? I, I think it's incredible. Gosh, I mean, uh, well, what it was playing? incredible last time, and, and uh, uh, we were doing it in a big, huge, st at the Opera House in, 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 in Pittsburgh. And here we're doing it in but this lovely theater. This theater still has such charm, mm. such warmth, and it's, it's an incredibly wonderful little theater of its type, you know? None better. But it's very difficult, very difficult. I thought we had plenty of time to rehearse. Now I know that we really practically could never have plenty of time to rehearse. It's so difficult and complicated, but wonderful, and I think it's going to work beautifully. We have a great director. Wonderful. Excellent. I'm, I'm so glad that you took time out from your rehearsal schedule to talk with us today. Well, I'm delighted you asked me. You Thank you very, very much. Such wonderful experiences yeah. out here, and yes. uh, good well, luck with the show. Thank you. And next time you're in town, please uh, let us uh, visit with you again. You bet I will. Okay. So thank, <laughs> thank you. you.